What's up guys, War here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm bringing you an updated version 2.0 of my Frozen Orb build for Diablo 4 Season 4. Now I'm going to go over everything, the gear, Paragon board, the skills, etc. And show you all the changes, plus with some bonus, you know, options that you'll have for the build uh, until we can get this thing perfected out. This is the next stage if you guys have been following me along this journey and we've been playing Frozen Orb. So let's get right into it. Uh, from our previous video, the skills haven't changed the same. There is a few options that I want to mention, but again, we're doing Firebolt, just two points to get to the next thing. Uh, we got maxed out Frozen Orb into Greater Frozen Orb. At this point, your mana should be fine. You should be able to handle your mana um, just fine you should be you shouldn't have to use destructive anymore you should be able to go into greater which will help make enemies uh vulnerable and allow you to do more damage then we're doing devastation into elemental dominance we max this to just have more damage down to our defensive skills we're doing flame shield into shimmering for that life in the unstoppable uh we are adding points to teleport and i'll show you where we took points from but we're almost maxing out teleport for that cooldown into shimmering teleport for the damage reduction then we got ice armor with enhanced armor ice armor for mana regen now if you do want to take a point out of this and add it to shimmering ice armor that is also nice because then the cooldown for this just kind of um you know it reduces the cooldown only is 14 seconds and then with shimmering armor with how much you're actually spending mana you can actually reset this pretty fast so i may take a point out of here and just do this this seems good, but otherwise you could just do enhanced. Uh, then we're maxing out glass cannon, of course, for more damage. And then one point to elemental attunement for the chance to reset a defensive skill. Uh, then we're going to come down and we're going to get ice blaze into summon ice blaze for the cooldown reduction. Lightning spear into invoked lightning spear for the critical striking when, uh, and then we stun on the critical strike. We do one point to align the elements just to get to mana shield for damage reduction as well as protection for a barrier. Having a barrier is important in this build. And then we max out Conjuration Mastery for even more damage and move speed and mana regeneration for each Conjuration that we have. Or active Conjuration, I should say. Um, it's a real bummer, man. Like, really, even if you put in uh, Hydras here and you're manually casting Hydras, you're getting, like, at the most, like, 10, 12 Conjurations. Or some people have been managed to get, like, 15 if you really invest all in on Conjurations. But it's still a huge, huge... Uh, nerf compared to like the 35 plus that we were getting in the PTR so um, but we still average about seven which is still pretty good uh, then we got one point into inner flames just to get to devouring blaze which is nice the CC effect here for 30% multiplicative critical strike damage against burning enemies is always going to be here we're always going to have enemies um, CC'd or crowd controlled then we got three points into permafrost for more damage three points into hoarfrost for more damage and as well as three points in the icy touch for more damage. Now, here is where we took our points out. We took our points out of Fridge of Breeze because our mana, being able to manage our mana is fine now. However, if you still feel like, you know, you're struggling with mana, I would say put it into Lucky Breeze or um, Fridge of Breeze. So just take a point out of this and the other points out of there and just throw them back into Fridge of Breeze and you should be fine. Now, down here on our key passives. Now, I want to I wanna just highlight this because last night during our live stream, I love Avalanche. I think Avalanche is great. On a lucky hit, we get a 10% chance to cast our next Frozen Orb for free. And it deals 45% multiplicative damage. And then it's a 20% chance that this happens against a vulnerable enemy, which everything is always going to be vulnerable. So I love Avalanche, especially for single target damage. Shatter is good for clearing out mobs if you really do enjoy that. However, a community member told me to do Veer's Mastery here. Close enemies take 15 times multiplicative damage from our shock skills, which is okay. It's only lightning strike, but more importantly, they deal 20% less damage to us. And then on a crit, it's 25% respectively for three seconds. We are going to crit a lot in this build. So, Veer's Mastery for 25% DR is pretty good. Or I shouldn't say DR. I should say less damage to us because we got to be, you know, it's all about keywords here and how, how, they, how Blizzard word things. But I've been doing this and using this in the pit, and it's actually been 
quite a surprise how strong I am. It, like how, how much I can survive in this build because we're kind of like a glass cannon. However, I will say that Avalanche is my preferred choice. But I've been like testing this and it seems really good. So I'm going to keep it on for the demonstration in today's video. But just a highlight there, that's just go with Avalanche until you feel comfortable with Veer's Mastery, okay? Next, into our gear slots. We got Concentration again, guys. Casting a skill gives us the 20% DR, which is huge. Uh, we got Raymond's, obviously, of the Infinite. Super strong when we teleport, we pull in and just destroy stuff. We got Frozen Orbit in our gloves here. Super strong. Tabalt's Will, new addition at this stage. Um, just farming Duriel, farming Andy. I've done four runs total with two Uber Uniques. You can see we got a Shaco down here. Uh, Tabalt's super strong. Even though they nerfed this from 40% down to 20, this thing is still best in slot. It is the best. You cannot replace the gain 50 primary resource and 20% multiplicative damage is just nuts. In our boots, we're doing Metamorphose here, okay? I still have Esus down here to talk about our options, but Metamorphose uh, paired with Tabalt's Will is nuts. Every time we Metamorphose, we become unstoppable and refill our mana. It's kind of busted how this works. And then more importantly, what makes it even better is on these boots in particular, attacks reduce evades cooldown by 1.5 seconds. So our evade cooldown is six seconds, but I can tell you we evade so quick. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the increased cooldown. Even if I had a perfect, perfect metamorphose at five seconds instead of 6.5, doesn't matter. The attacks reducing the cooldown. We attack so fast, doesn't matter. We can infinitely, almost, almost infinitely metamorphose or evade. So I really love this combination. It's super good. Uh, next, of course, we got Storm Swell, and then we have Conceited, super strong. Um, and then we're still using Prodigies, okay? We're still using Prodigies until we get a particular ring. But right now, Prodigies, still best in slot right now. Of course, Tal Rashas, and then, of course, Fracture Winter Glass, which is just amazing. I wish, um, shout out to Storm for helping me get this. Uh, hopefully, we can find a max one, but it's still very, very strong. Now, let's talk about our options here at this stage. These are the only two options that I would swap in is put Esus on. The reason that we do Esus is because right now our build is a 23% critical strike. When we dash, we go to 50. So the chances of us critically striking and doing 488% increased critical strike damage is very, very high. It's basically every other shot is a crit. Okay. 50% critical strike chance is pretty nutty. So if you guys do love Esus, there's nothing against running this. This is perfectly fine. You do not have to run a regular pair of boots like I am. Esus is perfectly fine. It works great. Next one is, if you happen to find it, is Shaco. Okay? The biggest reason why Shaco is good. Now, we get permanent 20% DR. However, we got match that here with the uh, concentration power. Okay? Cooldown reduction is very good. So our mana is even better. And with the resource generation of Shaco, it's even better. We basically just never have to worry about running out of mana. However, the biggest negative is our armor. Our armor is 6,000 with this on. And a part of this reason is because we're running too many uniques. Okay, We don't have options to put in total armor or get additional armor in these slots. So it's kind of a big negative. Now, I'm opting to run Concentration. We've almost matched the Shaco entirely, and this is for a whole nother video, but we've almost matched it entirely. So the, the only other huge plus for Shaco, obviously, is the plus four ranks to everything. But having almost my cap, we're like 100 armor points from the cap, so as soon as I level this up again, past level four like i'm not going to have an issue hitting this you could say the same thing here is if i level everything up to 12 um which i will do with the shaco and i want to see what my armor is now if it gets to to the cap and i can wear shaco i would prefer to wear shaco however this is a better in slot item for me right now over shaco 
That's just me personally. But if you do have Shaco, feel free to use this. Okay? It is still super strong. The extra four ranks as far as your damage goes is going to be nuts. That puts you to 12 on Frozen Orb. Um, so it's kind of insane. But I really want the armor cap along with my resistances, which are almost there. We're missing, what, 1.2%. So if I go into my Paragon board, which we'll talk about now. Oh, also, um, we're doing uh, emeralds in the weapons and then skulls in the armor. Um, again, just leveling these up a couple more times is going to max this so you don't have to worry about it. But if you do want these perma max, then go ahead and just add one um, diamond in here and it'll max all of them just fine. Paragon board. This has changed a lot in addition to what we've added. So a link will be down in the description below or in the comment section pinned for this build planner and everything that I have up to date. So let's go over the um, glyphs that I'm using. We are using seven of them, okay? We got exploit for more damage against vulnerable targets. We have control, obviously, for whenever we slow chill CC, but more damage if we stun or freeze. We got destruction for crit damage, which is huge. We got elementalist. For all of our non-physical damage and um, uh, dealing damage with this stuff gives us um, increased damage stacking, which is huge. Enchanter for even more non-physical damage. And we gain 5% maximum resistance to that skill, skills element, which is in our, uh, basically our enchantment slots. Flame Feeder for more damage against uh, burning enemies. And then Reinforce for DR with having an active barrier, which we will always have. So our enchantment slots are the following. We're doing Firebolt. So everything we hit will give us fire damage or burn them. And then next we got Frozen Orb. Um, when we cast a non-basic, we get a chance for Frozen Orb to launch. Now, I do want to mention one change which may happen in the final version of this build. Is you may not need to do Firebolt. Firebolt with the fire stuff can eventually go away. And we can swap this in for something else. But right now, this is still best in slot, in my opinion. Um, it still does very, very well with uh, Flame Feeder. So it just gives us an added element here. And it also helps us trigger our Telrashas. Even though if we dropped Hydras or do we just burn with Flame Shield, we can still get fire damage. But right now, this is best in slot, guys. So that's the build. Let's go over and I want to just showcase a pit run. Because a lot of people, when they come into the live stream, they ask about the pit. I have just started running the pit yesterday uh, as far as farming and trying to level up all of my gear. So we're going to do a pit run really, really fast, guys, and just show you. Um, I will talk about one kind of negative thing to this build, which is kind of a bummer. Um, I'm up to 43, but I'm just going to run a tier 40 just to showcase. So you're going to see in this pit run that we don't have any problem running, like doing damage and killing things, right? The biggest issue with this build, which you will see at the end, is boss damage. Because of the double nerf that Blizzard gave us for um, this build, our boss damage suffered a lot. Okay, our boss damage suffered way too much. Um, and it, it, it makes the boss fights last a little bit longer than what I would like from a Sork. Uh, in comparison to some of the other builds that we have had in the past or even other builds that we had on the PTR um, But you can see like we just we just are easily just going through this no problem um, And again guys this with the Veer's mastery and the reason I'm, I'm running that is because of how much stronger the monsters are in the pit which is fine so how are, but again, the avalanche is perfectly fine, guys. Like avalanche is 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 super strong, and it'll it'll still do massive amounts of damage because you get the free, you get the free shot, right? And then you know it does increase damage when you do use it. So, but I just I don't know. I really love the the damage, the extra twenty five percent less damage that I take. Um. Because you can see, like, we, we just don't have an issue with dealing damage right now. If it was taking me a lot longer to kill some stuff, then I'd probably go back to Avalanche exclusively. But right now, being able to just deal all this damage and just have the extra 25%. Because you're always going to be 
not only casting conjurations, but the lightning skills, like lightning or lightning spear is always going to be hitting something. So that less damage is just kind of really nice. And it's kind of an unorthodox way to play this build. But uh, as far as pushing too, like once you really start to push in the pit, I would definitely suggest it uh, for sure, for sure. But yeah, guys, the, the build still runs really, really well. Super strong, right? We're still crushing our enemies. The build still feels great. Now, you're going to see right here the boss damage issues with the build, um, where it takes us a little bit of time to kill a boss. Uh, that's just kind of the annoying part here. Now, we do CC very quickly, which is really nice in this build. We typically get like two CCs per boss fight, which is nice. And then the boss just dies. But you can see that like the boss damage just isn't as good. It's just not as good against the bosses anymore than it was. But again, you can still just clear um, pit runs very easily. It's just those boss fights just really... I'm not really sure how to get the build to just kill those things faster because we lose so many conjurations from the nerf since the PTR. But with that said, guys, this is the updated build for Frozen Orb. I've been really, really enjoying it, and I've been having a blast with this. I cannot wait to max this out and get our other ring and make some final changes for you guys. But right now, this is the up-to-date build, so if you guys have been following me, um, on this journey with the sorceress in season four here's the updated version and you will blast all content in the game so make sure to like the video guys let's get this over 100 likes comment down below let me know what you guys think of the updated version and where you're at in your journey with sorceress this season and don't forget to subscribe guys and as always stay gaming and i'll see you guys in the next one peace